Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixelpad tutorial. Uh, last class we implemented the uh, power up, right? We press play, the power up shows up after three seconds. We can collect it and we can shot uh, more bullets for five seconds. Yeah, so what I want to start doing today is to make the power up being spawned actually like the enemies are. So like in the top of the screen, outside of the screen, and in a random position on the X axis, right? So to do that, let's see how we did it uh, for the enemy first. So here on the enemy, you can see that we first imported random, so we can use the random function. And then we just had random.uniform, and that just means uh, give me a random number between, and then minus 600 and 600. And this is for the X position, right? So for the uh, horizontal axis. And for Y, we used 400, so it will uh, spawn the enemy outside of the screen. And the enemy also has a speed, right? And for now, our speed is two, but actually what I wanna do first, as we are here already, I want to make this speed to be random as well. So all the enemies will have a random speed. So I can say that my speed will be random.uniform. And now I will say, uh, let's see, from, so it was two before, right? So now I want my enemies to have a speed between one and uh, three. Let's see how it looks like. So if I press play now, all the enemies should start with a different speed. So you can see that now some of them falls faster than others. Right, you can see that some of them fall faster than others, and that's what I wanted. Maybe I can even make it make the difference bigger so some of them will fall way faster than the others. So, 1,4 should be enough for what I want, and yeah, that's it. That, that's enough. Let's go now to the where is it? Spawner in the loop tab. Here, we create the enemy and we create the power up, right? But our power up also is created just once, right? So when we collect the power up, it doesn't respawn anymore. So we can make the power up to respawn by saying that myself dot power up timer. So the power up timer will now be, so what I could do is I could say 60 again, for example, and then every one second after the first one, I would get more power-ups, but that's not what I want. I don't want to have a static uh, number here. I want this, this uh, power-up spawn to be random as well. So to make it random, we have to import random at the top, like we do with the other classes. And then we can use the random function. So instead of 60, I can say, random.uniform, so give me a random number between, and now we need uh, two numbers for how long my, my power up can, can take to show up my screen. So I'll say, for example, let's say 120 and 300. So 120 is 60 times two, so it is two seconds, and 300 is five seconds. So I'm saying spawn another uh, power up for me between 120 seconds, uh, 120 loop uh, steps, so two seconds and five seconds. But there's a problem here that if I say generate a number for me between two and five, it can generate for me, for example, uh, 2.5 or 2.2 or 3.7 right it's it's generating a random number for me and why is that a problem because for our t our timer we're checking if it is equals to zero so let's say my number here generates for me 3.7 right we keep reducing the timer in one so in the next loop it will be 2.7 and then in the next loop it will be 1.7 in the next one 0 0.7 and then later, the next one, it will be what? Yes, minus 0 
and minus 0 0.3 is not equal to 0. So this if here wouldn't execute and this uh, timer would just keep counting down uh, for to ma minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 and we don't want that. So to prevent that from happening all that we have to do is we don't have to check if the the power up timer is exactly the same as zero we can check if it is less or equal than zero now if it is 0 0.5 and it's not zero yet in the next one minus one so it will be minus 0 0.5 then it will be smaller than zero so it will run this function here this if so let's let's try it out the first one shows in the after three seconds and the other ones should show after between two and five seconds so you can see that it takes a, a little while to show another one for me but it shows and it doesn't take always the same amount of time right and now like seems not that helpful because I'm using low quantities of numbers so I'm using just two and five but if I use, for example, between 5 and 15, between 5 and 15 seconds, so that's a way bigger gap, right? So I have no idea when will be the next time I'll find another power-up for me to use. It can be in 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, uh, until 15 seconds. There, another one. So it's better, right? I will even put here from instead from 10 to 20 seconds. That's what I'm going to use for my. And then we can do the same for the enemies here. So instead of having an enemy showing up every second like we have, I can say that my enemy will show up after random.uniform so between half a second and two seconds oh half a second and two seconds there you go and then now we have to change this equals equals to minus to last equal sorry and now we have a way more random randomized game we never know when a next enemy will come how will be its speed Right, uh, what is it saying? Cannot read property destroy of moving bullet loop line 13. Let's see, bullet loop line 13. Oh, okay. Uh, it's probably because we have the destroy thing here before we move, so it might destroy the bullet and even though try to move itself. So, I, what I can do here, I can just bring this code here that makes my bullet to move to the top. So it first move and then check for other stuff. And that should solve this problem here. But yeah, so now my my timers are all working, but my power ups is still being spawned in the middle of the screen. So that's, that's easy to fix. Uh, let's go to the enemy and you can see here what we did to bring the enemy to the top and to give it a random position on the X, right? And here we have to import random at the top. So for the for the power up, we can do the same thing. So I can say here in the top import random, and then I can say that myself dot y will be 400. That is outside of the screen on top of the screen, and I can say that myself dot x will be a random number. So random dot uniform between minus 600 and 600 that is the left side of the screen and the right side of the screen right and that's all we need so you can see that after three seconds my power up will show up for me here in the middle of the screen let's see where the other one will show up but it it will take a while i guess <laughs> it is from 10 to 20 seconds but let's see it should be almost spawning a new one soon there you go so here's the second one and there now we have a power up being spawned or random times for us and we can keep playing forever our game and we'll keep receiving power ups which is pretty cool there we have another one nice nice okay now we are very close to finish our game 
and what I feel that is missing now is a game over screen so when our player dies we are taken to another game screen where it says like game over press press space bar to try again or something like this and display our score as well so to do that we are gonna use rooms so what are rooms so rooms are basically different screens for our game so think on uh, like Pokemon for example when you enter on the Poke Center and it changed the screen of your game for you you have a different uh, environment when you enter the Pokemon Center right and when you leave the Pokemon Center it changed the screen again and you are back on the on the open world of, of Pokemon so those are two different screens and we can have as many different screens as we want by adding new rooms so let's start by adding the room play I will call it play and will be the room that we are playing our game so right now we don't really use any rooms in our game and we can still play our game right but what we're going to do is we're going to put all our game all our code that is on the game class here inside the room play and then everything will be in the room play so if we change to another room we can have a different thing uh, we can have a different screen to our game so here now that we've created the the room play I will go to my uh, game class on the start tab I will copy all this code from here Control C to copy or command C if you're on Mac I'll go to my room play on the start tab and I'll paste everything there with Control V or command V right now that I have everything here I can go back there on my game room and I will delete all this code from my game start uh, on the loop tab we don't have anything so we don't have to copy anything but now you can see that if I press play I just get a black screen that's because my game uh, is now empty but that's not a problem the only thing we have to do now is to set the room to be the room play so I can say room underscore set and the name of the room we want to set that is play right so save your game stop play and there you go there is my game it's still working as the same as always it has no difference the only difference is that now we can create another room and later we can change between rooms to go to the to the other room let's say the room game over for example so let's start by creating the other room so here on rooms I will press on the add button again and I'll add the, the room game over that's the room that I decided to add so in this room for now I will just create a text so to do that I can say here for example game dot game over text is equals a new text that says game over and yeah let's see how it's looking like for oh I have to give the position so zero zero for now should be fine this is gonna be the middle of the screen and of course if I press play I go to the room play but as I want to test my game over room I will make my game on the start tab point to my game over room as soon as I press play now I go straight to the game over room and it is all black yet it's it doesn't have what I wrote there because the the color is still in is still black so I have to change the color so I can say game dot game over text dot color is equals white and now I have there my game over I can also say here game dot game over text dot font size equals let's say 40 uh, maybe it can be bigger 80 okay that looks better and then now I'll move these around uh, maybe I can make it 100 I want to put it here on the top middle of my screen now so make this 200 to bring it up maybe 400 too much 
350. There you go. I'll use 300 actually. And here on the X, maybe 150. Let's try 200, almost there. Yeah, that looks good to me. So we have the game over message over there. And I'll create here a new message to be the uh, space key to play the game again. So I can call it game, uh, I'll call it instructions will be equals a new text that says press uh, space to play again and I'll leave it on zero zero for now and then I say game dot instructions dot color this will be equal to yellow now I say game dot instructions dot font size equals to 50. Let's see. Uh, there's something wrong. New, t oh, new text, new text, uh, text like this. Okay. Uh, 50, I think is too big, maybe 40. And I'll start bringing this down. So minus 300 should send it to the bottom. And I want it to the left a little bit. Too much. Maybe 170. There, I think that's good enough. So I have my message of game over that I'll even make a little bit bigger. And now I have to move it again, of course. Uh, maybe a little bit more. So I have my game over message and I have my press space to play again. This is my game over room, right? And now I want to call this room whenever my player dies or gets destroyed. So let me go to my player on the loop tab. So here, if collision check between myself and any enemy from the from the enemy class, I don't care who this enemy is, I just destroy myself, right? But instead of destroy myself, what I'll do, I will room set to the game over room and I press play. I'm starting the game of the game over room, so I will change that here on the game start for me to start on the play room. Now, when I press play, if I collide with an enemy, I should be, yes, I should be brought to the game uh, over room. But there are some problems here. You can see that my score still is here, right? That, that wouldn't be there if I already start on the game over room. But as we came from the playroom, this score is still there. But that's fine. We can, uh, we can use that score later. So you can see that when my player dies, we are already being, uh, uh, our screen is already changing to the game over room. But it's just missing now we display the score, how much score we've got, and make this spacebar thing actually work because it's not working yet, right? I could have here, for example, a background. I could, uh, instead of writing this stuff here using code, I could just uh, take an image of a background or go to another website to draw my own background and write this this informations here and then I could just use a background image here that would do the same and I just display my score with the text right because the score we have to display with text with code because our, our score changes right but yeah it's coming along pretty well I'm liking it and we're gonna finish it on the next class we're going to finish the whole game. So I'll see you in the next video. Save your game and bye.